Good morning. Um, welcome. Uh, my name is Mark Green. I'm the Director of Studies of the Spinnaker School of English here in Portsmouth in the UK. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you this morning about our school and also the location of the school uh, here in the UK. So I'm going to be talking a lot about what we do, um, what our approach is to uh, education in relation to English language and exam preparation here, and also uh, some of the benefits of choosing to study in the UK, particularly uh, Portsmouth, which is a city that you may or may not have heard of. So, start with a question, you know, why, why Portsmouth? Well, lots of good reasons. Um, if you can see here um, on, the, on the map, um, you can see that Portsmouth is on the south coast. Um, it's a small city, uh, about 70 miles from London, um, which is only about an hour and a half by train. Um, so it's uniquely situated pretty much in the middle on the south coast. Um, so we have a small population. It's actually an island city um, separated by a small stretch of water, um, but it's a small population, just over 200,000 people. Um, but it's a very, very vibrant city. We have a, a university here, University of Portsmouth, that has over 23,000 uh, students. Um, so it has a, um, a very uh, interesting and exciting kind of dynamic to it uh, with that mix of students. So just kind of walking through the streets of Portsmouth um, is, a, is a, a very um, lively, uh, very active place with a lot of young people. Um, so there's plenty of things to do for any students who, who come to Portsmouth. Uh, it's also the home of the Royal Navy. Um, the Royal Navy have been here for centuries. Um, so there's has a rich history uh, with the sea. Um, also, hence the name of the school, Spinnaker School of English, um, which is a type of sail that's on a yacht. But it's also the name of one of the key attractions here in Portsmouth, which is the, the Spinnaker Tower, um, which more you'll see of in, in, in a moment. So um, it has a lot of history uh, going back many, many, many years, many centuries. Um, and it's famous for um, a lot of the historic ships that have played a key part in British history uh, over the centuries. So it's a port city. Um, it's not just the home of the Royal Navy. Uh, it also has very um, strong links with continental Europe through ferries. Um, so it's a, a great place um, if, if you come to the UK to be based somewhere that is not far from the capital because it's only a one and a half hours by train and it's a direct route um, and it's pretty inexpensive to, to travel. Um, and it's also a good base for the local area. Um, and if you someone wanted to, they could also travel to Europe, um, uh, you know, quite quite easily from here. Um, so it's quite unique, um, an island city um, with lots of um, interesting naval history, also literary uh, history too. We have um, the a lot of Writers were born here, such as Charles Dickens, uh, I'm sure you've heard of. His birthplace is here and there's a museum um, that's dedicated to him. Um, Rudyard Kipling, I think, also was also lived here for a while. Um, so it's a, it's a tiny city, um, but it's got a lot to offer. So as you can see, this is just uh, an image here of the Spinnaker Tower. This is the um, the the, the tower that I was referring to a moment ago. Um, this is something that dominates the skyline of Portsmouth um, and also is what the school is named after. So you can see here the lovely waterfront, all these places here that you can see um, are places that you can that you can visit. As I mentioned, here's the uh, historic dockyard. There's just an example here of some of the things that you can see. On the left there is HMS um, HMS Nelson, which was um, used uh, as the flagship um, for Horatio Nelson, who I'm sure you've you've heard of. Uh, and also over there, you can see other attractions that that you can see in the historic dockyard, which is one of the key attractions here in Portsmouth, and and perfectly kind of shows really the, the history um, of the city. 
Gun Wharf Keys. Now, this is where the Spinnaker Tower is. This is a, a, a main green destination for shopping in the city and also for nightlife and, and restaurants. It is a very bi uh, big buzzing place particularly at night time, it's very, very popular, not just with, um, with local people, but it does attract people from outside of the area. Um, there's also accommodation in that area too. Um, it's been a very, very successful development for the city, um, and it's somewhere where our students uh, spend a lot of time. There's cinemas, there's bowling alleys, and I said there's restaurants from, uh, with cuisines from all over the world, um, and there's, there's so much to do there. Uh, and that's kind of like one of the key things, um, one of the key attractions here for us in, in, in Portsmouth. As a port city, we have uh, a lot of beaches and obviously it's an island, so we're surrounded completely by the sea. Uh, as an old Victorian um, holiday destination, it still has a lot of the unique features from that period, particularly in terms of the architecture. Uh, as you can see, also one of the um, old piers that were built during that time. Um, so it's a, a lovely place to come just to uh, go for a stroll, uh, go jogging, people use it to, to run and uh, to socialise and it's a really nice place just to relax and uh, walk along and there's plenty of cafes and restaurants um, and the like that you can go and visit. So it's a, just a very, very pleasant little city. Um, it's pretty quiet. There's lots of green open spaces. Um, as I say, it, its location is, is, is very good in the sense that uh, there's still lots to do in the city, but there's many other places that you can use the city for as a base to go and explore other parts of the UK. Right, so that's where we are, that's where we're located in the city of Portsmouth. So now we're going to talk just a little bit now about our school. So we are a British Council accredited school. Uh, we have been continuously since 2008. Uh, the most recent inspection we had was in 2017, which I oversaw, um, and we received um, a number of uh, strengths in that inspection. One of them was academic management, quality assurance, uh, our accommodation that we provide was seen as a strength, our premises and our facilities, uh, and also our leisure op uh, opportunities, what we provide for students to do outside of class. Um, so we have um, a very good, strong base, uh, which we've established over the best part of 10 years. Um, so our ethos at the school, um, really is that of a, a family kind of feel. Uh, we are a small school. Um, I would say at peak we have um, capacity for about for about 70 students. And we operate on two floors um, in the centre of the city. Um, we're directly opposite a train station as well, the main train station in the city. So another good reason um, to, to come here is that it's very ac accessible. Um, so we have a family feel to the school which basically means that we treat all of our customers students and the like um, as individuals so our kind of ethos is to give the personal touch to people uh, whether that's in class or out of class so you're not just um, a number like at some schools which are a lot bigger um, but because we're small we're able to give that extra bit to individuals to make sure that, that they're learning in a way that which they like, uh, that they can see that they're making progress, uh, but also it's the, what we call, kind of like the wraparound services that we have for students while they're here. So welfare is something that uh, we dedicate a lot of our time to. Um, so there's robust safeguarding, particularly um, around uh, young people, we do take, um, in the summer, juniors. I'll talk a bit more about that later on um, when we look at the courses that we do. Um, but we also uh, take 16, 17 year olds all year round. Um, so we have a very robust safeguarding system here at the school. Um, I'm the designated lead for that. And I also have a deputy um, in the event of me not being here. Um, so I'm responsible for the, the policy, I'm responsible for the training of staff, uh, and also things like safer recruitment to make sure that we're following 
accepted guidelines um, to ensure that when we're recruiting teachers, for example, or staff, that we're re recruiting in a way which ensures that the, the students are safe. Um, all staff go through safeguarding training, as well as what we call prevent training. Um, so we do have a very robust and, and embedded safeguarding system within the school, which ensures that all students are, are safe whilst they're with us. So we have a very caring um, approach to individuals. Um, and I say it's a personal touch. So we are very friendly um, and we are kind of quite unique in that sense um, is that we do go that kind of extra mile for people. We will do that little bit more to make sure that people are happy while they're at the school and they're also happy while they're out of the school so that their you know, accommodation is exactly what they require, that it's um, in a decent uh, and a, an accessible location. Um, one of the good things about Portsmouth is it is, is a tiny island, so it, it doesn't take too long to get from one point to another. So to get from A to B is, is, is very easy. Um, but um, a lot of our accommodation um, is with uh, British families who live in um, a place called South Sea, which I've just shown you a picture of. So um, there's a lot of nice uh, areas in the city where we can place people. And as I said, because of that personal touch, because of the individualization of what we do, um, we're able to place people um, you know, appropriately that meets their, meets their needs. So we're very dedicated to what we, what we do and our approach. Um, we're very professional. Um, all of us here um, can be um, easily contacted during the day, um, also after school, uh, we have an emergency telephone number, so students can contact us uh, any time of the day if they have a concern or there's something that they need help with. So as I said, we do go the extra mile. Um, we don't just um, take students into a class like, and then they leave, and that's, that's the only kind of contact that, that people have. There are plenty of staff around who are ready to listen um, and will help to ensure that their time here is positive, that it's an, an enriching in, in every sense, not just in the classroom, but out. So I mentioned the word enriching. So we do have a very positive learning environment here at the school. Um, and what we do, we operate a negotiated syllabus. So obviously uh, as a language school, we take students all year round. So there's no kind of beginning or an end to the course as such. So we have to manage that somehow. Um, one of the ways that we, we've have, have, have tried and is successful is to kind of negotiate what students learn whilst they're here. We could have students who are here for maybe a week, some maybe for a month, some maybe for six months or more. So all of those students will be in the same class. So we need to be able to um, ensure that all students receive the learning that they require. So what we do is we operate a weekly scheme of work where students can uh, decide what they want to learn each week with the help of the teacher. Obviously the teacher has a lot of uh, input into this because they will know what those needs are of the students. But if the students also have an insight and will say, well, you know, I might want to spend more time looking at a particular skill, whether that's speaking, whether that's writing. So that will be incorporated into the scheme of work. Um, someone might say, well, you know, I've had a bit of a problem with a particular grammar point. Um, I've done it before, but kind of struggled a little bit, still don't quite get it. Fine. So we can incorporate that into the scheme of work each week. And that is something that is built upon, but it's not set in stone. So it, it, it changes through the week, um, depending on what comes out of the classes, uh, the lessons, and then that's kind of fed back in to ensure that everyone is receiving something that they wanted to, wanted to learn and that they can all see that they're making progress. Uh, assessment, so we assess <coughs> students every two weeks in the form of um, a written test. And we also have continuous assessment um, throughout the course, with particularly with skills, with a quite a strong emphasis on speaking. Um, so teachers will set up 
various activities enables them to accurately assess the speaking skills of the, of the students in their class and that is something that is done um, I say continuously during the time the length of time that the student is here so we do have quite a strong skills focus as I said particularly with with speaking um, we find that that helps to, to, to build people's confidence and that has um, that kind of spreads out into other areas of their of their, their language skills and their language acquisition as well so we do have quite a strong emphasis on on, on developing on speaking skills um, outside of the classroom, we have quite a varied social program for students. Um, in the past, we've incorporated kind of like a student-led approach to that. Um, we talk to students and find out what it is they would like to do. Um, we also run things as well, uh, not just in the school, but also obviously going outside. Um, but we do ask students to give their input into the things that they want to do uh, whether that's you know sports whether that's um, restaurant nights whether it's quizzes at the school um, it, there's, there's lots of things that we do uh, and also obviously we do day trips um, if, if you know if, if students want to um, take time out at the weekend to visit other parts of the of the UK So class sizes at the school, um, that's always an issue for students. Um, that's one of the first questions they ask. Uh, well, we're a small school, as I said, so our class sizes at peak probably reach a maximum of about 10. Sometimes it might be a little bit over, um, but the classrooms are a good size um, and can easily accommodate that, uh, that amount of students. Um, all the classrooms are bright and airy uh, and have the um, technology that the teachers need and the students uh, would require in order to uh, to learn um, appropriately um, so we have a mix of long-term and short-term students our long-term students tend to be government sponsored um, from different parts of the world who are here because they want to develop their English and their skills in order for them to get into university in the UK so we offer uh, long-term programs for students um, the idea is that they start off with general English and then they um, either include IELTS which is normally what they wish or what they need I, I should say to gain entry into university um, so we have that kind of student that comes to the school kind of longer term ones um, and then short-term students language travel students uh, from Europe and obviously also from the from the summer uh, which is um, obviously the peak time for us. Um, our main regions that we take students from are the Middle East uh, and Europe, mostly Italy, Poland and France. Um, we do have um, quite a, a diverse mix of people here already in the city. So we do get people who study at the school who are actually living here. Some people just want to improve their English to enable them to uh, improve their job uh, prospects, for example. Average age of students is between 18 to 30. Um, in the summer, that's probably a little younger because we have the, the junior program. Um, but uh, throughout the year, I would say that it's um, the average age is between 18 and 30. Now, a benefit of being a small school is that we can be very flexible. Um, so unlike a bigger school, um, which has to take time to adjust to changes in the market or changes in the needs of uh, our customers, we can offer a tailored provision, whether particularly to groups, um, whether that's because of professional development, whether that's because uh, of their, you know, their profession and they need to learn English for their profession in order to be able to come and work in the UK um, or to take advantage of opportunities overseas. Um, I mean, you name it. I mean, if there's something that um, you want us to provide, we can do that because we have that ability to kind of um, to, to navigate and change um, our um, offer to individuals and groups. So that's something to, to, to bear in mind. So now just onto the onto the courses. So this is just a, a snapshot of what of what we offer. Um, 
general English, um, so that covers the four skills, uh, grammar, pronunciation and, and vocabulary. Uh, that takes place mostly in the mornings from Monday to Friday, um, and that's three hours a day. So that totals 15 hours a week uh, just for general English. In the afternoons, we offer language skills classes. Um, and again, that focuses on developing uh, the skills that the students wish to uh, focus on. Again, it's the same pro approach that we take in the morning. It's a negotiated syllabus. Um, exam preparation. So IELTS is the most popular. As I said, we have a lot of students who wish to gain entry into higher education here. Um, and we, that's the one that um, has certainly the most, most take up, certainly locally as well as from abroad. And we also offer Cambridge and Trinity, and we are a Trinity test centre. We do have a very strong uh, record of success enabling students to enter um, higher education here in the UK. And I would say it's around about a 95% success rate for those people who study IELTS, um, who need a particular band to get to university. We're able to help them to do that because of our approach. So general English and business is uh, another course that we offer. Um, again, that's something that we can tailor to individual groups if um, you have students who wish to look at a particular area of business or to develop certain skills within it. Uh, the junior summer program that operates from about the first week of June until the end of August. Uh, we take learners as young as young as seven up to 15 on that on that particular course and that is for 15 hours a week of general English in the mornings and then in the afternoons Monday to Friday we have the social activities that we, um, we provide for students. Uh, again, a lot of that takes place in the city, but we also um, have day trips to other parts of the UK. And something that's um, quite unique, uh, certainly uh, to a language school, is what we call our academic enhancement programme. Um, that is where young people, school age, um, come on like a study tour of the UK. So for an eight day program, they, uh, it's all inclusive. They come, to, they come to us here in Portsmouth as the base, and then they have the opportunity to visit the universities of Oxford and Cambridge and meet the, the, the academic staff from those, from those institutions. Um, and they can learn about different uh, areas of science or technology and STEM, you know, STEM subjects. So the, each of the programmes has a theme. Uh, for example, one might be robotics. So as part of that, they will learn how to use technology in order to build a robot. Um, they will also then obviously still visit those other universities in the UK that's part of the programme. The idea really is to inspire um, the, the, the young minds of the future generations who will go into university and then um, eventually we'll go into into their chosen areas of work. So the idea really is to say, well, look, this is what um, the UK can offer. These are our institutions that you know you you can gain entry to if you work hard. This is what you can achieve, and these are the areas that maybe you need to be thinking about for a future well future academic um, career, but also um, for a job later on in life. So the idea is really just to take these young minds and say look kind of immerse them just for a few uh, you know for a week or so in this in the country get used to being in, a, in uh, the UK uh, talking to local people but seeing what it is that they can achieve and what they can do uh, when they when they leave school that is on our website along with uh, the other programs if you want to, uh, to have a, a little bit more of a uh, detailed look. So on to um, academia, excuse me. So our approach, all students take a level test, a written test, as well as an oral assessment when they arrive on the first day. That enables us to place them appropriately and accurately. Um, they also complete a learner needs analysis, so that helps us to know how they like to learn, what are their priorities, um, so that can then be fed into the into the lessons. <coughs> Excuse me. As I mentioned earlier, we have a negotiated syllabus. 
Um, so students do have input into what they learn. Um, the learner needs analysis also helps to build that weekly scheme of work. So from that initially we can kind of start with what it is that the students want to want to focus on. We have a tutorial system so students are able to meet with their teacher, um, get advice, not just on their studies, although the teacher can give more kind of individual feedback through that system. Um, on the areas that they need to to kind of uh, focus on perhaps look at their strengths um, but also they can discuss any kind of pastoral issues so any welfare issues that they may have whether it's accommodation um, whether they're having issues um, um, in the city whatever it may be that system hopefully then captures um, any of those issues so that we can work with the students to resolve anything that they're that's making them feel uncomfortable or something that isn't quite right for them. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we have a not about a 95% success rate for our exam preparation students, particularly with, with IELTS. Um, again, I would say that's because of how we do things. Um, it is a tailored approach because we're small, um, but we're small so we're off, able to offer more dedicated time to individual students. Um, so it's a little bit more, um, I say you use the words science to it, but it's just that it's more targeted um, because of the fact that the, the school is, 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 is relatively small and the ethos that we have when we teach students when they learn in class, uh, but also when they're, when they're outside too. Uh, all of our teachers are qualified, um, they have a lot of experience, they've all taught abroad, not just in the UK. Um, for example, myself, I've taught in, in China, uh, Nepal, uh, in, uh, in the Middle East and also in, in Sri Lanka, as well as the UK. Um, so we have a breadth of experience here at the school. Um, and also each teacher has uh, a training budget, so we do invest quite a lot in uh, what we call CPD opportunities. So continuing professional development um, is something that was highlighted in our recent inspection as being very good, uh, worthy of praise. Um, so that is something that we do focus on with our teachers um, just to keep everyone um, up to date with, with you know, methodology um, or, or, or any kind of areas that they're perhaps not um, familiar with or anything that they choose to do to enable them to develop their skills, which ultimately obviously benefits us as a whole as a school. So just to move on now then to talk about our student um, student services. I've touched on some of this already, um, but uh, so that we have the tutorial system. Um, all students um, are, can have a meeting with their teacher or they can have the meeting with another member of staff if they wish to talk about any issues that they want to uh, raise with us. Um, so that happens every every two weeks, or it could happen a lot more frequently if if the if the student wants it. Safeguarding. Um, we have named safeguarding leads. I'm I'm the uh, designated safeguarding lead. Um, so there are people here whose uh, responsibility. The role is to ensure that all students, but particularly our younger learners, um, are safe and secure, not just in the school, but also um, whilst they're in their accommodation and whilst they're living here in the city. Um, all staff are trained on safeguarding. Um, that is renewed um, every, every year. All staff have an enhanced DBS check. So we also check the um, barred list for people who, who have worked with children before. Um, so that's the highest level of uh, criminal background check that we can do, and, and all of the teachers and staff have that. Uh, we have a named welfare lead. So every student knows who to go to, who's responsible ultimately for their welfare. Um, although they may choose to talk to a teacher, they may choose to talk to the accommodation officer, for example, but there is someone here that oversees the whole of the welfare system that we, we have in place here. 
Um, an attendance policy, so that's something that we watch very closely. Um, obviously, students have to have to attend, and they have to attend um, for a uh, certain percentage of the of the of the classes, and that is something that we monitor very closely to ensure that students do come. Um, we have a 24/7 emergency contact, so whatever the time of day, whether it's in the evening or whether it's on the weekend, then. Uh, there's always someone that they can contact to talk to to help them. We will help with health, so if students require a visit to the GP or they need a dentist or whatever it may be, um, then we can provide those um, uh, access to those services and support them, particularly with language, in order to be able to access the health that they need. So moving on to accommodation, um, we have a dedicated officer who's responsible for uh, sourcing hosts in the city. Um, we inspect all of our hosts. Um, they're all with British families. Um, although one thing I would say is that I think sometimes culturally the idea of a family can, can, can be different. Um, in the UK, a family could be a single person, uh, it could be a couple that live together, or it could be you know, a family, um, which we, you would expect you know, with, with children uh, and a husband and a wife. Um, but what we try to do, because of the fact that obviously people have different expectations about what a family is based on their culture, is that we will try to place the student um, with, you know, the type of kind of um, family that they that they're familiar with or would prefer and feel more comfortable with. Um, we inspect all properties and we do background checks on all of our hosts. Um, all of our hosts who accommodate under 18s undergo a DBS check like the staff do. Um, safety is paramount so we check uh, you know gas safety, fire safety, uh, we do go through a number of checks and hosts are inspected um, every year just to ensure that the, the property is um, up, to, up to standard and that all their documentation and the, the safety certification uh, is, is, is in place. We offer um, a number of types of uh, accommodation, so the self-catering um, and, and half board, those are the two that are most popular. Um, and we can move students up to three times uh, for free while they're, in the, while they're studying with us. Um, sometimes students, if they're, particularly if they're here for a long time, um, they might choose they want to go and live somewhere else or they're not particularly happy with the host that they're, they're with, then we're happy to move them and we'll find up to three hosts during their, their, their time here. Uh, and as I said, we always, try to match um, students with hosts that meet the student preferences, uh, whether that's um, the family makeup or whether that's to do with their diet or whether it's because they like um, or having a, a, um, an issue with pets or, or whatever it may be. Um, we'll always try to match the student appropriately with the host. So travel. Obviously, we arrange airport transfers um, from all of the major UK airports, as well as the, the local one in Southampton. Um, we also can help with buying bus passes and language support for people to book travel, uh, whether it's internally in the UK or whether it's because they want to go a little bit further afield. And our social activities are, are varied. Um, we do have a lot of social activities that we um, have in the evenings and also the weekends and we also organise obviously day trips and the like for students. So just some information about how you uh, can enrol, how you can um, become a student here at the school. So it's quite a straightforward process. Um, you complete the application form uh, online and then you can also upload a copy of your passport. Um, you will then receive the conditional offer letter and then once we receive payment, we will then raise the required documentation to enable the student to uh, get the visa if they require. Um, and then basically we just need a proof of the visa and then um, the student is able to book, book their travel to come here. So we do have some terms and conditions. Um, so for visa nationals, um, they have to study for a minimum of 15 hours. Um, 
We do give refunds for students whose visa has been refused. Um, they get the full tuition refund, but we do take out £250 as an as a, um, administrative fee. Um, accommodation money, all of that is returned, provided that two weeks notice is given. Um, other than that, we have to uh, take out one week because we need to pay the host because we've already um, agreed with the host that a student is coming. So that money is refunded. Um, if the student councils themselves and they're a non-visa student, then we require two weeks for notice um, um, for that to, to be processed. Um, but we don't give refunds for short-term stu uh, study visa, um, self-cancellation, um, sickness or, or holidays but if someone does require a holiday and they and they ask for it officially then we we can extend the course for them provided that they have the um the required length on their visa attendance is 80 percent that's the required amount of attendance here at the school um and as i said we do take under 18s um, 16 and 17 year olds are enrolled as adults, so they'll be in adult classes. Um, and as I said, we have the summer program, which is for under 16s. Uh, for all under 18s, we require a parental consent form, um, which is part of the application. So I mentioned to you earlier about quality assurance. Uh, that was an area of strength in our inspection. Uh, and here you can see what those quality assurance tools are. Um, so myself as a key contact for the students, whether that's in class or there's an issue outside of class, uh, our qualifications of teachers, um, they're all appropriately qualified, all TEFL I or TEFL Q. Um, we invest heavily in, in teacher development, so that's another area where we can guarantee that um, quality is at the heart of what we do in the classroom how we place students and how we monitor their progress. Uh, that is something that is done continuously. Uh, obviously the welfare, which I've spoken quite a lot about uh, this morning, um, that is also another area which shows that we pay particular care to the individual needs of students and their well-being. We have a dedicated student accommodation officer uh, and we also give students uh, a handbook which contains all of the information that they require about the school, uh, the rules, of the school um, and where to go to for help if they need it. Student feedback, so we ask students to give us feedback on the course and their accommodation after one week and then we also have like a mid course feedback and an end of course feedback. So that is all fed in uh, to ensure that we adapt and change things as, as is required. And finally, obviously we have our independent inspections by the British Council. This just gives you a, uh, an idea for the for the course prices here. Um, so as you can see, um, the longer you study, the cheaper it is. Um, there is a registration fee to pay, but one thing to remember is that uh, for 10 hours a week, um, that's not available to international students. Basically, if you're a visa national, then you need to study for at least 15 hours. So the 15 hours, um, just to recap, that's the general English. Um, 10 hours in the afternoon is normally just the skills or the uh, exam preparation, and 25 hours a week is full time, and that's where students can choose uh, general English in the morning, and they have a, a choice of exam preparation or language skills in the afternoon. What we have here is the uh, accommodation. Um, so you can see the prices here. As I said, most students tend to go for half board, some for self catering. Um, self catering is not an option if you're under 18. Um, and also, we do charge an extra uh, supplement if someone is under 18 or they require a special diet, whether it's halal or, or vegan, gluten free, etc. So I just thought it would be interesting to look um, at the, the cost of living and in comparison with London. So you can see here that it is a lot cheaper to come and study and live in Portsmouth than it is the capital. Obviously, when people think of the UK, a lot of them just think automatically of, um, of London. Um, 
yeah, that's understandable. It's the capital, um, but it is very expensive to 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 live in London. Um, as you can see here, the rental prices are here, the accommodation prices are a lot cheaper, um, restaurant prices, um, and basically generally uh, the amount of money you have in your pocket goes further um, by living in Portsmouth. Plus you have the benefit of its great location, um, which means that you can visit other areas and it doesn't really take very long to get there particularly london as i said is uh, only an hour and a half away so just gives you an idea of um one of the benefits really of living in a in a small city like by like portsmouth so the future um obviously like any business um and particularly at the moment with um some of the uh, big political issues that are happening in the country um we have to keep uh, an eye on on the future and make plans so this is kind of what we're aiming to do um in the in the short to the medium term uh, we are looking at getting other accreditations and hopefully then moving towards uh, a tier four license with the home office um, which will hopefully also give us some more um, more stability in these kind of uncertain times with um, the UK kind of political situation well that's um, the end of my uh, of my talk um, so if anyone would like to ask me some questions then uh, please feel free to do so.